So like innovation is one of those words that sounds so grand, so important, so desirable that it must take a genius to uh, really uncover those kinds of things. You know, the kind of things that make a two times, a ten times, a hundred times difference between one company and another. But when you really think about it, actually all innovation is, is how one company can better meet the needs, the wants and the desires of the people who are their customers or potential customers than any other. And that's all it is. You know, the strange thing is that it doesn't have to be anything to do with technology. So take Amazon as, as an example. Whilst it may seem that, they're a, yes, they're a technology company, actually the two innovations that have really made a difference for them are Amazon Prime and one-click checkout. You see, with Amazon Prime, what they've done there is created a commitment device. So you as a customer, you get free priority delivery. Um, and in exchange, in, um, Amazon, uh, they get you as a customer for longer. So it works for both people. And then the second thing is uh, one-click checkout. So rather than it taking many, many steps for you to check out with Amazon, it's incredibly simple. You just test, press one button and boom, you're done. And if you put those things together, actually what happens is that 74% of people who hit Amazon's site who are Prime customers actually check out, actually buy something. Uh, whereas only 14% of people check out if they're non-Prime customers. Now, 14% is still so much higher than your interest rate average, but the reason why, yeah, one-click checkout. So it doesn't have to be anything to do with technology. Now, a second thing as well, another surprising truth, is it doesn't actually have to be that you re-engineer a product. So I'll give you an example of uh, something that happened recently in the UK. It's a big craze, which is about micro-scooters. So what happened was there were two mums who had that problem of they were trying to take their kids to school, but what was happening is the kids were dawdling and they thought, you know what, there must be a better solution to this rather than just dragging them through the pavements. And they looked around and they couldn't find anything until they found these little Swiss micro scooters. The problem was though is that they just weren't really attractive to their children. They were black, they were chrome, you know, they were designed by the kind of people who wear black cashmere sweaters and, and live in Switzerland. And so what they did is they approached that company and they said, look, I think we've got something here. And the guy said, okay, what do you mean? He said, well, look, they said, why don't we buy the license off you so we can buy um, the license, the exclusivity to distribute these in the UK? And they said, okay, great, sounds good to us. And they said, okay, there's one subtle thing that I'd like you to do. And the Swiss people kind of sat up in their chairs and say, what's that? Expecting to kind of re-engineer their product. And they just said, look, we want you to make the products blue and pink. Blue and pink, and that's all you need to do. And they thought about it for a while and they said, all right, fine. They tried it out and sales absolutely soared. So previously they couldn't sell these things to anybody, but actually after they just changed the color of the product, um, they went, you know, sales went through the roof and it's now worth about 15 million pounds every single year in the UK and growing rapidly. Um, I don't know if you have this too, but every single day if you, if you walk past a school, you'll probably be attacked by about four or five kids who are on these micro scooters. Incredibly effective little thing, but you don't have to re-engineer things. You just have to understand people a little bit better. Now a third way that actually, so third surprising truth about innovation is that it doesn't have to take months, it doesn't have to take years. It can be something surprisingly subtle, something surprisingly small, but if you know where to look, um, then you can actually discover these kinds of innovations overnight. So just ask the Amsterdam airport bathroom cleaners. So they had a real big problem, which was spillage. So essentially blokes were pissing all over the floor, and they understandably didn't particularly want to be mopping this stuff up. And they put their heads together, and then one bright spark came up with an idea. How about this? Why don't we give men something to aim at? And they thought, okay, that's a good idea. What could that be? And they came up with this idea of putting a fly sticker. They put the fly sticker in the urinal so that men would actually aim when they're having a piss. The result of that, an 80% reduction in spillage. Now think about that. An 80%, think about this in, in these terms. How about finding something that had an 80% improvement in your business results and it was something so small, so subtle, uh, that didn't take months to engineer at all, but you just knew, knew what to look at. See, that's really the canvas. The canvas is the human mind. It's about human behavior. And as Stuart Butterfield, who's the CEO of Slack, um, now valued at over 3.8 billion, he put it, look, the best, maybe the only real direct measure of innovation is change in human behavior. So if you change a million people's behavior, that's incredibly innovative. And if you, let's say you spent billions of pounds, you spent months of time, and you re-engineered a product, but only changed one person's behavior, it's not innovative at all. And that's really what you've got to think about. You don't have to think about technology. You don't have to think about re-engineering things. You don't have to think about spending months of doing it. It's just about finding the right thing.